Do both of you support the nominee of your party? I support the nominee of my party. Do you, John? I don't. You don't. Um, I, I thought that was part of the case, but I wanted to have you say it, not me. Um, the, if we look at the potential outcomes, and I, as I introduced, introduced at the beginning of, of our conversation, in any scenario in which Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, is any of this conversation that we've had uh, relevant to, to that scenario? Uh, I mean, is there a, is there a way to, uh, to take the, the, the sort of wise counsel that you've tried to offer here, is there a way that that comes to bear in meaningful ways in a Trump presidency? Well, I think the, the president has to reflect to the American people. And once you're president, uh, you move beyond the campaign and politics and the divisiveness, and, and it's your obligation to the unite people and parties across uh, common solutions. And I think there's so much bipartisan momentum to address our uh, opportunity gap, uh, reform our criminal justice system, ensure young people, whether they're black, white, poor, rich, middle income, have uh, a quality of opportunity. I mean, that's defined us since the beginning. Um, our country's coming apart in places like Ferguson and Baltimore and Chicago. Um, it's the obligation of the president, all our political leaders, um, to um, offer solutions that can help bring us back together and uh, provide those opportunities. So absolutely, whoever is elected, if it's Donald Trump, um, he has that responsibility if it's Hillary Clinton. And, and we, can't, we can't just leave the burden on the president. We all have to be active in our own communities and neighborhoods and lives and through the institutions which we work um, uh, to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm.